we are going to end the chapter with probably the part of the ocean that we know the absolute least about, and that is overall the ocean floor. You gotta think about two factors going on here, how extensive it is, how much it actually covers Earth's surface, and then how deep it is. We are at a limitation in terms of exploring the ocean floor. Water is heavy, it's really heavy. So the deeper down you go, the more weight you have pushing on you. So when you start looking at our technology in terms of how do we get down there and see what's going on, we are a little bit limited. So when we look at the ocean floor, uh, many of the important features of the oceans are hidden in deep water. When we look at the ocean floor, we have what's known as the continental margin and then the deep ocean floor. So those are kind of the two parts of it. When you look at the continental margin, there's three big parts to it. So this is the region that's around the continents. It's going to be covered under the water, but when you look at it, you can clearly see, hey, it's not that far off in terms of the depth of where the continent, the land is that we see. We have the continental shelf, which is simply just an extension of the continent. We have the continental slope. It's going to be the area that drastically starts drop, dropping off. So it's where the sea slopes towards the deep ocean floor. And then this area where sediments have washed down from the continental shelf and slope is called the continental rise. So those three areas, the shelf, the slope, and the rise, are all a part of what we call the continental margin. Look at that word margin. Like even when we do documents, word processing, the margins is what's on the outside, right? The continental margin is just what's on the outside of the continents comprised of the shelf, the slope, and the rise. Just there's a nice, a better, nicer picture there. So we see the shelf, the slope, and the rise. That's what's at the edge of every single continent. This section talks a lot about features of the ocean floor. We actually use special maps to study the ocean floor. They're called bathymetric maps, as you can see in this picture here. Now I don't just see land and then blue water. I see some colors in the water there. So bathymetric maps show us features on the ocean floor and things that we're going to talk about today. Most of the ocean floor is this. It's the abyssal plain. It's what we call the true ocean floor. It's actually quite flat. It's smooth. It's covered with this um, ooze-like material. It's not sand like you would think of that's near the beach. When all these organisms die and they drop down to the bottom of the ocean, um, if they're not consumed by other organisms, it just sort of creates this ooze over time. In areas where the ocean floor is older, it's actually thicker than areas where it's younger. It can lie anywhere between 2,200 and 5,500 meters deep. Other features that we see forming in the ocean, we have something called barrier islands. They're these low sandy islands. They lie parallel to the shoreline. If you look at that picture in the upper right hand corner there, that sort of green area you see there, that is called a barrier island. It's sort of a natural, we talked about breakwaters in the last section. It's just something that naturally happens from wave action and they actually will also become natural breakwaters to the land that's behind it. You can see that sheltered area there. On the other side of the barrier island, you see we will often get this feature called a bank, a low flat region that's on the continental shelf. You may have heard of it before because they're great fishing locations, um, fishing on the banks people talk about. Seamounts are these steep uh, sided mountains that rise up from the ocean floor. They were once where a volcano was erupting magma on the ocean floor in an area we call the hot spot and that tectonic plate has since moved. And you will often see these in a chain, just like you see in this picture on the bottom here. But seamounts, so they're steep, steep sided, they're V-shaped essentially from the bottom. Here's just another page on barrier islands. So once again, upper left hand picture there, I can see um, a barrier island that's forming. You'll often see a lagoon behind there. Um, bay features will be in those areas. The picture on the lower left hand side is what it actually looks like in, in real life. And what a great location if you get enough sand to start. Now we're building homes and we're building other things on it. We have a lot of barrier islands um, on the Atlantic coast. The coast is just way too rocky on the Pacific side of the United States, very sandy on the Atlantic side. So we get a lot of these forming. If you've ever been to Padre Island in Texas, that's a barrier island. Looks really thin, but it's a you know, bolstering hotel community on there. And then Galveston Island is another one I found a couple in Texas, but these are located everywhere, North Carolina, Florida, everywhere. Um, but essentially we, we form communities on them and we just have a bridge that goes over them. If you want to visit Padre Island, you want to visit Galveston Island, you're just taking a bridge uh, to get there. Sometimes over time we can have those seamounts get eroded over time and form a Gaia. Um, 
I think I said that right. Oh, I looked it up before the lecture just to make sure I did, but it's, it's similar to that. I believe it's a French word, so you would say in the French uh, pronunciation. So it's a seamount that is eroded over time. So wave action eventually at some point in time essentially chops it off. Looks like it, it's almost like a table if you want to think of it that way. In the middle of the ocean, you can see in the map on the, on the right-hand side here, that's another bathymetric map where you see those white lines occurring. Um, that's just drawing in for you tectonic plate boundaries. So these are locations on Earth's surface where tectonic plates, and you'll notice on all these locations, the arrows are moving away from each other. So the Atlantic Ocean is probably the most famous one. That is what we call a mid-ocean ridge. So a place where two tectonic plates are separating from each other, they're making new ocean floor. If you look in the picture in the upper left-hand corner there, so those tectonic plates are separating, and as they separate, new magma comes up to the surface, creating new crust. And this process just continues to happen, pushing that crust and pushing that crust back towards the continents. In general, they're called mid-ocean ridges. The one that you see in the Atlantic Ocean is called the Mid-Atlantic Ridge um, in the middle there. Really all it is, it's a series of tall mountain ranges that are just underwater. That's all they are. So they pass through the world's oceans, they're underwater, creating new land. Another great feature are called deep ocean trenches. So in some areas, now sometimes when we have crust that's coming together and one of them is getting slid under or pushed under another part of crust, we get these features called an ocean trench. If you look in the upper left-hand corner there, really, really deep parts of the ocean, the deepest parts of the ocean. The deepest one on Earth is called the Mariana Trench. You can see in that upper right-hand corner there, um, it's located just off of Guam, but you can kind of see the area there south of Japan. Because that area is really, really dark, not a lot of light because it starts to go down deep, this is where you start to get some of these really like cool animals um, that live in that area that have to do their own things like create light um, and other things, really cool features. So lots of ocean features um, on the ocean floor. Abyssal plain is really what most of it is, where we have tectonic plate boundaries separating away from each other. We get mid-ocean ridges. Seamounts, remember, are um, sharp. Goyals are um, flat across the top. Barrier islands and uh, banks are associated with each other. So there's, just another, there's another bathymetric map showing us that mid-Atlantic ridge going down the ocean. So lots of cool ocean features there. If we are in an earth science class, or I'm sorry, a life science class, really, we could go into some really cool things with the animals that live in the ocean, but that's for another, another day.